How's it going guys? My name is Arthur and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go through task three of the Goldman Sachs Virtual Internship Basic Excel Skills, which is the PL forecasting. This is a continuation from the previous task where we created our assumptions. The key skill that we're getting out of PL forecasting is being able to link our numbers to our prior assumptions. So we're going to make an effort not to hard code anything. Everything will be linked to the assumptions sheet in this Excel file. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So we begin uh, on this blank sheet and we're gonna start with filling out our revenue. So here we see it's gonna be price times volume uh, for each product. And then we're gonna sum the total revenue. And then we also need to figure out the growth rates. Now, in order to do this as quickly as possible, uh, let's first go and see what our products were. We have cupcakes, ice cream, and drinks. So we're going to fill this out. All right. And for units, we have dollar amounts. Now, in order to do this uh, as quickly as possible, I'm going to highlight this entire row press enter, go back to the assumptions sheet, and we're gonna do the units times uh, price in order to get the revenue for cupcakes. Now you can press control enter and that entire row fills out. Now let's do the same thing for ice cream. We have 60,000 units, $3 per unit. Control enter. And one more time for the drinks revenue. Perfect. And now to sum the total revenue, we can highlight the row equals sum, highlight our cells and control enter once again. Great. And the final step here is to calculate growth. So the fastest way to do that will be to once again, highlight the row equals FY21 number divided by the previous year minus one. Now that gives us the growth rate year on year. Control enter to fill out the rest of the row. All right, pretty simple. Uh, most of this task is sort of similar to this. So just bear with me uh, as I fill out the rest of the Excel sheet. So here we're looking for our COGS uh, per um, every single revenue stream. So each product we're selling. So we can, we can see that down here. Um, now here we just have our COGS per, uh, per product. So we need to be careful here. Uh, we get our units sold from um, sort of the, the very first question that we did. Once we fill this out, this is again, the units will be in dollar amounts. So I'm gonna highlight this row equals. So we're gonna use the COGS per cupcake, but then we're gonna multiply it by the total number of units sold for the year. And then control enter, we get that whole row filled out. And we, let's do the same for ice cream and drinks. Multiply by the units. That's how much it costs to make. And finally, you can do uh, 50,000 units by dollar 10. And control enter. There we go. Great. Uh, so for our gross profit, this will be our total revenue minus the sum of the COGS. So remember the total revenue includes all of those products on their own, is the sum of all those products. Um, so we're taking their 
into their respective cogs out in order to get gross profit. Um, now to calculate margin, we just wanna take our gross profit amounts over our total revenue. So this is not a growth rate. We're simply interested uh, essentially in how much, how, how much of the revenue is actually gross profit. So here it's about 60 to 70%. All right, so next we're looking for our operating expenses. So we can sort of just pull this from our previous uh, sheet. Now here it's important. I don't recommend hard coding the, these numbers, although you, you definitely could. So um, just for, for formatting purposes, I will be linking uh, all these cells. I won't be just copying them across, but I will copy across the names. So if we just go on this left-hand side, I'm gonna take these names, copy, and we can paste values. Paste, but I wanna maintain that blue format. So let's just paste the values. So we maintain our formatting. And then our next step is simply to link the cells. Okay, we can just copy that in, paste, and then uh, as it's in the same format, we can just paste that in too. Just copy pasting these cells. Now, EBITDA is similar to gross profit. We wanna take out our operating expenses here. Uh, so we can take this gross profit amount and then take out the sum of our operating expenses for the year. Control enter will fill out the row. Oops. Let's try that again. Great. Uh, margin is exactly the same as prior. So just double checking that that worked out. Looks good. So our margin, again, we're looking for EBITDA. Um, however, it's again over total revenue. So that's important not to forget. So here we can see a quick sanity check as it should be decreasing because now we've taken out our operating expenses. So that's down about another 30%. So finally we have, uh, next we have DNA to calculate EBIT. So here the signs are important because I remember in the assumptions tab, uh, we had negative percentages. So we just need to you know keep that in mind. I think here I'm gonna go for keeping it uh, as a positive number. So we'll, we'll subtract it out of EBITDA. All right. So to calculate the percentages, we would need Sorry, to calculate the actual expense amount, we'll need the uh, annual percentage. And we can multiply that by revenue as its annual percentage of revenue. That's sort of the assumption that we make. Uh, and we need that number to be negative. So, sorry, positive. So right now it would be negative. So. Okay, I'll, so I'll just multiply, um, I'll just multiply them out, but then I'll just multiply by an additional negative one, uh, just to get a positive number uh, for the expense, because then I want to take it out. If it was a negative number, we would just have to make sure that we're um, adding it back, which I think technically, um, I don't know, you just need to keep that in mind. Uh, this is sort of what I'm going to follow. So see how these numbers are positive. So when we're calculating EBIT, we want to take out depreciation and amortization. And there we get, we get um, the following. So once again, the margin should have gone down. Notice how net interest uh, is, is blank and profit before tax has already been filled out for us. So another little uh, contraction in our margins. 
so we'll skip that uh, PBT uh, row. We're going to go straight to the tax expense. Tax expense stays at like 21% all the way through. So we're just going to say, um, I don't know, annual tax. Once again, we're looking at dollar amounts. And we're using the uh, profit before tax number. So we're multiplying this by our tax rates. Control enter to get the whole row. And now to get our NPAT, we subtract our tax. Boom, great. And then our margin should have contracted once more. Take it over the revenue. Now a small contraction. All right, and then finally, we have our dividends. So, so take note that this is our gross dividends. So uh, what that means is we're probably looking for a percentage figure here, rather in the top line, and then we're gonna use that to calculate the gross dividends paid, which will be taken uh, as a proportion of the NPAT that we just calculated. So let's highlight these rows. Again, let's just link it to the assumptions, even though it all just stays at 60%. You never know when we when something might change in the assumptions uh, sheet. And then to calculate it, we just go 60% uh, times NPAT, and that will be the gross dividend for each year. Great, there we go. There you have it, everyone. That's the PNL forecast complete. I can't stress how important it is to make sure that you're linking everything to the assumptions tab, uh, because if anything changes in the assumptions tab, it will be populated straight through uh, into the PNL forecast. If you hard coded any numbers, uh, you could mess up uh, a lot of things down the line. Things will stop reconciling, and especially if there's a team working on, on a worksheet, it, it could cause a lot of problems down the line. Please let me know if you guys had any questions. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.